Welcome to the Association of Schools and Colleges of Optometry's podcast series. ASCO produces podcasts on topics pertaining to the field of optometry, being or becoming a doctor of optometry, academic optometry, and more. Listen to our podcast through ASCO's website at optometriceducation.org or ASCO's YouTube and iTunes channels. Today's podcast subject is a bit different from topics we've already covered. Today we want to talk about misconceptions of optometry and why two current optometric students ultimately chose the field of optometry. Today we're chatting with Morgan Bayless, second-year student at Michigan College of Optometry at Ferris State University, and Chanpreet Swani, a first-year student at Salis University, Pennsylvania College of Optometry. Morgan, you ultimately wanted to become a physician. You were studying pre-med, and something changed your mind. And of course, now you're studying to become an optometrist. This had something to do with a young boy that you helped. Tell us a little bit about that and why you switched career paths. There was this one boy that I did certain vision therapy exercises with him every morning, and he was able to, in two years, get caught back up to his class and enter back in. Surprisingly, I found optometry was first introduced to that in a classroom setting. But then after that, I decided I was like, hmm, medically related. And so started pursuing pre-med just to go for like an MD. I um, ended up having an internship at Cleveland Clinic. It's a summer scholar program for six weeks. Got to see all the crazy ins and outs of the hospital. It was quite the adrenaline rush. I got to watch a quadruple bypass. But then as I was studying and applying for the MCAT or taking the MCAT and applying to medical school, I realized that it wouldn't just be like a six-week adrenaline rush. It'd be the rest of my life where you don't have as much in the hospital of a steady patient base as you do in like optometry, where you're going to have a patient for a little bit and help them through their issues and they're not returning. You don't get to watch like say a kid grow up. And I was like, hmm, I think I might like prefer a primary care position where uh, don't necessarily your patients don't pass away on you as often either. So I started looking into back to where um, I had came from with vision therapy and all those different ideas into the optometry. And I realized this was a great profession. It was still medically related. You have your solid patient base. But then you also have like the fun aspect of the fashion of picking out glasses combined with medical. So it's just a well-rounded, great profession. So now looking back, are you surprised that you are actually pursuing a career in optometry? It's funny that you said that. Our senior year of high school, we wrote like a six-year letter to ourselves, and mine just came in the mail. And I was like, I'm sure you'll be a happy teacher by now, like, like not even on my radar at all. I had, I needed glasses. I had been to the optometrist, but I just hadn't even thought of it as a field. And Sean Preet, no pun intended, but you had one foot in the door to become a podiatrist. You decided that podiatry wasn't for you, and you chose the path to optometry. What happened? In my first semester of podiatry school, I realized it wasn't really where I see myself in 10 years. It's a great profession, but I just, I don't think I had done enough research in the field uh, to know exactly what it entailed. Um, It was actually in gross anatomy where we started from the lower limbs and ended up in the head and neck. And I realized, wow, the eyes and how they're integrated into the rest of the body is extremely interesting. I had spoken to my dean actually of the podiatry school and had expressed my concerns and he was like, you're a bright student, I think you should go for it. A year ago, I started studying for my OAT and it was the best decision I ever made in my life. I couldn't be happier. It's Optometry is such a rewarding field as of just even me being a first year, everyone just seems to love what they do and a really positive outlook on the field. So now that you're both studying optometry, looking back, did you have any misconceptions about the field of optometry? John Preet. I think there's just a slight misnomer that optometrists just kind of refract and dispense glasses. Really, optometrists are primary care doctors. We're the ones that we get to see patients when they're children all the way up until they're, they're old and elderly, and it's wonderful. 
And Morgan, what preconceptions did you have about optometry that you're finding to be wrong now? It's a crazy profession that of how much that we can do. We're the only profession that can code for vision and for medical. I really definitely didn't realize how much medically related things that we could do. Even when I started optometry school, the eyes are actually a window into the rest of the body. I was so surprised as you dilate your patient and you look in with a BIO or your fundus exam and see the back of the eye, how much it tells you about the rest of the body. I, the, I'm so surprised at how many systemic issues that you can just realize from the eyes themselves. Let's focus a little bit more on the future of your optometric education. Chanpreet, where do you see yourself headed? In other words, what aspect of optometry are you pursuing? The more and more I, I look at optometry as like a wider field, there's just so much I want to do. And I think neuro optometry is just so, so interesting. And there's just so much to do with it. And so I definitely w would love to pursue a, a neuro uh, residency after school. Would love to eventually own my own practice or work in conjunction with, you know, ophthalmologist or other uh, physicians. That would be my, my ultimate, like, uh, five-year, ten-year plan. And Morgan, how do you see your future in optometry? I have always been interested in the medical side of things. That's why I thought I wanted to go to medical school to begin with. I think I want to pursue vision therapy and pediatrics where, you know, that student that isn't actually learning disabled but just has an ocular problem and so they can't read in class where I can get them back up to where they can play sports and read out loud in the classroom is really where my passion's at. So if a peer or a friend of yours was majoring in pre-health and they were a little bit undecided about what direction to go into, maybe in a similar situation that you were into before you chose the field of optometry, what would you say to your friend that might even persuade them to consider optometry? John Preet, what do you think? So my brother is uh, just graduated undergrad um, this past May, and now he's also in pursuit of medicine. And, you know, whenever I come home, he sees how excited I am to study and all the different things that I am studying. And, and so I, I was like, why don't you look at optometry? It's a great field, and there's so much you can do in the field. And, and so I would tell them to go and, and shadow different doctors and, and different fields of optometry and see what different doctors do and do group practice and, and you know, private practice and retail and see what, what it is. And Morgan, what would you say to a friend? The most common comment that whenever I tell someone that I'm in optometry school, Morgan, what are you doing? Your profession is going to be obsolete, like an auto refractor that can just, a machine can find someone's glasses prescription in 2.5 seconds, like your profession is going to disappear. Like, why would you pursue that? To the point of our refractions, too, is they're subjective. Your patient gets an opinion in how their glasses work, which a machine can't do. It's an art. And as far as being concerned, optometrists aren't just prescribing glasses. If I could get on top of the Empire State Building and doubt that out, we're medical doctors, too. Well, you both now sound absolutely committed to the field of optometry. And thank you so much for your candid answers. We normally end each podcast with a question, and this podcast is no exception. What do you think the future holds for the field of optometry? I think slowly it will become even more medically related for everything, or in all states. The thing that I'm so excited for with optometry is with EHRs and just the way that communication has expanded, expanded the ability to co-manage a patient. We have a clinic on our campus where um, you see a nursing student, a pharmacy student, and an optometrist all at one place to manage a diabetic patient. So you get a well-rounded, communicated exam. And just our ability through everyone's ability to see a patient together systemically is something that's really inspiring. We're you know, 100 years ago, you'd have to use a carrier pigeon. We can communicate through our EHR. Thank you both for being with us in today's ASCO podcast, Misconceptions of Optometry. For more information, please visit optometriceducation.org.